Hey everyone, welcome to this beginner's guide on using V-Ray for SketchUp. Today, we'll talk about the animation options in V-Ray. Take a minute to download our project files from the link in the video description so you can play with the scene in your own time. Now, let's jump right in. First off, we need to understand that the camera animation in SketchUp is usually controlled by the saved scenes. Let's take a look at this by going to the animation settings. Here, we can see that the camera will move from one scene to the next in about four seconds. We can change that to five, three, or any other duration we prefer. Also, I don't want any delay in my V-Ray scene rendering, so I'll make it zero. Great. Now we've set up our camera animation, so let's look at the two scenes that will determine our camera movement. Notice the first camera, the day and time are already set in SketchUp. If we switch to the second scene, which is closer to the building, we can preview the camera animation. Also, pay attention to the different time of day in this scene. This means we've got a zoom animation too. Let's start the interactive render to see how our scene looks. As you can see, we have the clouds function turned on, but what we're really interested in for this tutorial is right below the dynamic clouds option. When this is enabled, the clouds use unique offset and phase values based on the current time of day. This lets us create moving clouds in our animation. There are three settings to adjust here. First, we'll set the direction of the clouds. A value of zero means that the clouds move in the positive x direction, which is usually the direct axis in SketchUp. If we increase the wind direction value, the clouds will rotate clockwise. In our case, we want them to move from the background to the foreground, so we'll rotate them 90 degrees. Wind speed is usually set to one. If we make it larger, the clouds will move faster, and if it's smaller, they'll move slower. After that, there's phase velocity, which controls the rate at which the random noise pattern of the clouds changes over time. Now, let's check out the trees. These are proxies imported from Chaos Cosmos. If we have animated proxies already, we can load them in. Just remember that since SketchUp doesn't support geometry animation, we'll provide these animated trees with the video. I'll switch out the proxies with the animated ones. There are a few settings to adjust the proxy animation. First, we can offset the animation of the proxy. The second setting determines what happens after the proxy animation finishes. Every animated proxy has a certain duration, and we don't want the trees in our scene to stop moving halfway through the animation. So from the drop-down menu, we can choose what happens next. The default setting is loop, which means the animation will start again. Once means the animation will run once and then stop. Ping pong means the animation will run backwards after it finishes from the end to the start. This way we can keep the motion going smoothly. All right, we've set up the clouds and trees and now we need to decide how the animation will be rendered. Go to the render settings and switch the denoiser type. For final renders and especially for animations, it's a good idea to use the V-Ray denoiser because it's more accurate. The other types are suitable for interactive rendering because they're really quick. Also, we don't need the fast update rate for the denoiser. This option makes the denoiser run often while rendering. We can just set it to run at the end so it'll clear the frame after the render is done. Now let's enable the animation rendering. So instead of rendering one still image, V-Ray will render frames for the animation. Animations are usually made up of frames. You'll need 24, 25, or 30 frames for one second of animation. By default, V-Ray will calculate the number of frames with 30 per second. We can choose to render the entire animation. As we have four seconds, we'll render 30 frames for each second, which equals 120 frames in total. Or we can choose a specific range of frames to render. To make sure of the frame count, click on Get Animation Range. We can see it's from 0 to 120, where 0 is the first frame and 120 is the last one to be rendered. From here, we can choose which frame to start and end the rendering on. This is handy if we need to stop rendering for some reason. After that, we can start rendering again from the last frame we worked on. If some objects or the camera are moving very fast, we can enable motion blur to blur them. This creates a feeling of movement in our animation. But remember that motion blur can slow down the rendering process. Next, we need to specify the resolution, HD in our case, and a really important step, set an output for the frames. After a frame is rendered, V-Ray will immediately start on the next one, so we don't have to save it manually. 
Plus, saving each frame by hand would take way too long. Once we've set the path, we need to choose the image format for the saved frames. If you're planning on heavy post-production, save it in EXR format. But if we're not doing that, we can save it as a JPEG. Now let's get rendering. If you don't want to use your own computer for rendering, you can use the Chaos Cloud service. After setting up the animation in SketchUp, click on the Cloud button and the project will be sent to the Cloud platform. Here, you can still change things like resolution, name, and frame range, then upload. Now, the Cloud will render each frame of the animation at the same time. Once it's finished, there are a bunch of tools to preview the animation. One of them, Chaos Player, is designed specifically for animations and is part of the Chaos family. Just drag one rendered frame from the folder into Chaos Player and it'll load the rest. Click play to preview. Then you can export the animation as an MP4. All right, that's everything for this video. Make sure to check out the rest of our SketchUp Beginners guide videos.